Hey guys, back again. This is the second day of my Boogeyman on a Budget series. And what I did yesterday is I explained that I'd been to Big Lots, I had 10 bucks I was trying to spend to get the entertainment for the day. And what I actually ended up spending was a little less than 12 bucks, I believe, with tax and everything. And what I actually got was enough entertainment for two days and snacks for two days, everything. So this video, I'm actually gonna show you the second day's worth of stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I got, then I'm gonna go watch the movie and I'll come back and I'll talk about it like I did yesterday. First of all, for another three bucks, today I got these Tales from the Crypt movies, which is the first and second movie that Tales from the Crypt did, which is Bordello Blood and Demon of Night. Technically, there's a third movie that they did that a couple of years it set on the shelf or something. I don't know the exact story of that, but you can look it up probably on Wikipedia or something. But I believe it's called Ritual. And it's... I haven't heard very many good things about it. I've actually never seen it. So if I get a chance to watch that one of these days, I will. Either way, I got this two-pack of the Tales from the Crypt first two movies. And this was only three bucks, which I thought was a great deal. The only problem is, as much as I love Tales from the Crypt, the TV series that was on HBO, these movies I remember being very meh. You know, just, mm. I actually saw, I th I think I saw both these at the theater. I know I saw Demon Knight at the theaters for sure. And I was very underwhelmed. I think a lot of it was expectations. Being such a big fan of Tales from the Crypt, I was very excited to see a feature film and to see, you know, the Crypt Keeper up on the big screen. And I went into it and it was just, it was okay. It didn't even seem like it was a very interesting Tales from the Crypt story. It seemed like probably an average or below average story for the regular TV show. And having that much budget increased. I really had high expectations thinking it was going to be a great movie. Because I was so underwhelmed both the times I watched these movies initially, I've thought about them a lot over the years wondering if I should revisit them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch Demon Knight, which was the first movie I saw at the theaters back in 95 or whatever year this was when it came out. So I'm going to go watch Demon Knight for the first time in a long, long time and see what I think of it. And then we'll come back. And I'm also for a snack today, had chocolate flavored Twizzlers. These were only 60 cents. So let me try one of these real quick. This is what I'll be snacking on during the movie. If you're a fan of Twizzlers, personally, I love Twizzlers. I'm not a big fan of licorice flavored things, but I've always enjoyed the strawberry Twizzlers and then also the pill and eat cherry flavored Twizzlers. But around the 90s, these kind of came and went. And you only randomly see them now. But I was glad to see that Big Lots had this package. I really like the chocolate. It's a very subtle chocolate flavor. Kind of like the way you would think chocolate tastes like in a Tootsie Roll or something like that. It's not a very strong chocolate flavor, but it's chocolatey. But I really enjoy these. I had had them in probably a good five years or more. So if you ever get a chance, try out chocolate Twizzlers. And they're made with Hershey's chocolate like that would matter but yeah chocolate flavored Twizzlers I watched Demon Knight surprisingly it was a little better than I remembered it but there's only certain aspects of it that I really enjoyed of course the opening sequence with the Crypt Keeper was really fun it was fun to see the Crypt Keeper step out of his role on the TV show a little bit and kind of show him in a little bit of a higher budget <laughs> performance. It's very odd. It's kind of like watching ALF when all of a sudden they'd have the little person in the outfit instead of the puppet. And then they'd switch back to the puppet. There's a moment like that in this that's kind of odd. There's one where it's obviously somebody in a suit and they did like a like a chroma key type of digital element to put the Crypt Keeper's face over his face from about the neck up. And then there's another one where it switches right after that to the puppet, and it's very obvious that the neck and the shoulder section of the puppet Crypt Keeper is a lot smaller <laughs> than the actor that they had in the suit. So that's kind of weird, but once we get into the story, what the story is about is this guy's on the run, and it's pretty obvious that this guy that's coming after him, that's looking for him, is looking for this key. And this key is going to, you know, kind of unleash hell on earth kind of thing. And um, 
what's what's really weird is this isn't a bad story. Like I mentioned before, I remember this being very mediocre. That is true. I think for for this story to be great, the thing that would have made it better is if it had been an anthology. I think that would have fit good with Tales of the Crypt if they did like three 30-minute stories with a wraparound with the Crypt Keeper. That would have been good. But this movie, at feature length, has a lot of unnecessary exposition in the beginning. And I can't even truly say it's exposition because there's about 25 minutes before this story gets going for Demon Knight. And in that 25 minutes, the first five minutes is Crypt Keeper. The next 20 is basically backstory of characters that do not matter to the entire backstory. You're hearing about who these people are and it's character build up for these side characters that have nothing to do with the actual twisting supernatural part of this story. So their backstory isn't that important and we don't have to continually see how they bicker and don't get along and everything because, you know, once the you know, all the stuff starts going down, that doesn't really matter. So that's part of the problem. I think it, you know, is just a little long, a little stretched out. What I do like is the design on the demons. That's pretty interesting. The story with the key was kind of cliche. But uh, there's a weird thing at the end of this where it says, after the credits, the Crypt Keeper comes back. And he tells you that he will be back immediately for another Tales from the Crypt movie. And it even gives the name. I'll print it on the screen right here, the name of it. Because honestly, don't remember. I, all I remembered more than anything was that it's not actually the name of the next movie. Apparently, that was maybe the idea that they had going for the sequel. And they kind of, you know, just didn't hit the mark on it or whatever. Or somebody came up with a better idea that got approved over that. Either way, it's odd. Right? But... Demon Knight is an okay movie. I don't really say that it's great and it's not bad. If you're a hardcore Tales from the Crypt fan, you're definitely going to want to watch it. The Crypt Keeper parts alone are you know, going to be worth it for a lot of people. The story itself is just okay. You've got Billy Zane as this, you know, like the main demon guy. And he's just not one of my favorite actors because that kind of takes away from it. But all in all, the, the actors are fine. The production value's just fine. Everything's okay. This is definitely worth the money I paid for it. I don't feel bad. But at the same time, eh, you know, I probably won't get the desire to watch this very often. Okay. Now I'm going to take you guys over to the bonus section of today's video. Okay, we're back for the bonus section. And guess what? <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and keep you guys here, and the thing we're going to talk about is I went ahead and watched Bordello Blood, and surprisingly, this is kind of like a direct sequel. I kind of got a curious feeling that I really wanted to watch it after seeing Demon Knight, because I thought, I I think I remember you know liking Bordello Blood better, but I don't really remember that much. I remember that, you know, it was mostly Dennis Miller, and that's kind of like what I vaguely thought of it, you know, in the 90s. I can say it is more fun in certain aspects. Surprisingly, there is a direct sequel type of link to Demon Knight, which is kind of unexpected because that's not what usually happens in Tales from the Crypt. You don't get hardly any continuation from one story to the next, other than the Crypt Keepers there. The beginning of this actually isn't as great as Demon Knight because you don't get to see a full Crypt Keeper intro that you would like. Instead, what you get is this kind of like fake adventure type movie that looks sort of like a really bad ripoff of Indiana Jones. And then you end up finding that this guy is looking for this body of this woman and then he's got the key. And it's the key from Demon Knight. So surprisingly, that connection is there. The Bordello Blood itself kind of starts after that. And this beginning story actually has nothing to do with Bordello Blood in its own way. It's more like these guys are talking. It's William Sadler, who was in the first movie, Demon Knight, which was the guy on the run. It's, it's him again, I believe, and he's dressed as a mummy. And he's sitting there, and it's kind of funny seeing the going back and forth between him and the Crypt Keeper. And then what you get is you get the actual story as it starts in. And... That story is The Bordello Blood, where Dennis Miller is a private detective. There's a Corey Feldman moment there at the beginning where these guys get led from this bar to this actual 
bordello. And that bordello is set kind of underneath a funeral home. And then it just kind of gets oddly off course. It seems like there's a lot of unnecessary back and forth to get Dennis Miller fun things to say. But Dennis Miller is asked to investigate where this brother is. And he kind of loosely gets thrown on the track and finally finds this bordello, goes through the process of getting in there. And what you find is that there's a lot of just blatant, you know, kind of unnecessary nudity in this, but, you know, it's a bordello. What do you expect? But what I found on this that's really kind of annoying in the long run, because it is funnier and it does feel truer to the Tales from the Crypt in many ways, but the humor is written for Dennis Miller, and a lot of that humor doesn't translate well with what kind of humor I think he's known for, which is more of the quick... Uh, political style humor and sort of obscure references to people that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't. He's kind of known for that. And in this movie, what they give him is a lot of little bitty lines where he's never quite taking things seriously. And it looks like he, in the middle of all the craziness, really just doesn't take very much of the deaths that are going on around him and the gore and everything. He doesn't take that very seriously. And it just comes across as kind of corny. But... It was a lot of fun. I'd say it's on par with what you'd expect after seeing Demon Knight. It's just um, a little bit of a different tone, but, you know, it's perfectly fine as a sequel. So I'd say if you can find this two-pack, go ahead and pick it up. I'd say both those movies are worth watching at least once or twice if you could get that, you know, cheap. I'm going to have a bonus snack for you guys, too. I got this at work. Hopefully you can see it. And uh, even if you can or can't, you may not recognize it. This came in a very large sack at work, and somebody got these at the grocery store. This is actually dehydrated, dried okra, if you're familiar with the vegetable okra. And I didn't think I'd like these, and at the same time, I've been obsessed with them the last few days. Let me give you a bite here, and you can hear how crunchy this is. I'll lean in for the crunch effect. That's right. If you're a big fan of okra or if you even have okra in your area, it's kind of a southern thing. You'll often see them pickled or occasionally you'll see them fried. But I think most people know them pickled. Um, these here are just dehydrated whole. And I think they're tossed in a little bit of vegetable oil or olive oil or something like that. And they're lightly salted. Okra itself is kind of sweet. So it's a good combination. It's like sweet and salty. Not fried or anything, not really anything added to them. It's just pretty natural. It's kind of like um, if you dehydrated, you know, banana chips or something like that, but more salty. It's surprisingly very good. I'm like really a big fan of those now. So I will leave you guys at that. This has been an extra long video. What I wanted to do was show you what I could get on a budget, namely less than you know six dollars for a day of activity, which is today Twizzlers and Bordello Blood and Demon Knight. So that's a pretty good deal. And I'm kind of curious if you guys have access to Big Lots or something like that, what you could come up with for five bucks. You know, could you find a good scary movie for Halloween, a good horror genre movie for three dollars, get a 50 cent snack, a 50 cent drink, something like that, and feel like you really got your money's worth. But if you did, definitely show me in a video response or leave a comment down below. And let me know what you found. Alrighty, I will leave it at that, and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Alright.